You are now listening to For All Nerds Show, a podcast about geek and pop culture from the perspective of people of color. For All Nerds is hosted by DJ Ben Amin and Tatiana Keene Jones. For All Nerds Show is a member of the Loudspeakers Network, where we will always say rest in peace to our founder, Combat Jack. For All Nerds Show is powered by our listeners. Everything we do from our podcasts, live events, our website are all independently funded. Please continue to support us through our Patreon page at patreon.com slash for all nerds. Welcome to the Fan Bros, the show where the bros are fans. Doodle. What's good, Internet? And welcome to another episode of the For All Nerds. Show. The voice of the urban geek, the podcast where we discuss geek culture from the perspective of people of color. And as always, sitting in the captain's chair, it's your boy, DJ Ben Amin, a.k.a. NBA young boy, never blipped again, tan the manly, brother voodoo child, Professor DMX, Ghost Rough Rider, it's dark, cold, and hell is hot. Here in the spaceship tonight, <sighs> Big Dick Grace and Energy, you know how we doing. And as always, I'm joined by Tatiana King, a.k.a. the Grand Duchess of Tech, also known as Flex Luthor, Ned Slanders, the King of the North, he who cannot be shamed, Lambo Calrissian, and the Book of Ashanti. Hey! Baby, 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 baby. I used to hate that joint because she jacked uh, Starface for Mary Jane. Listen, that is still one of the iconic songs that will Both go are. down Both in hip-hop Can't R&B front. history. Um, TM me for that Dark Hole in Hell is Hotline. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Big thanks to my co-captain on the spaceship for blessing me so I yeah. could have my trio of DMX. This man, Rest like in this- peace, dog. You know what? Like I was actually just on a podcast recently where they asked me how we came up with these uh, AKs. And I'm like, sometimes it's literally five minutes before we record. Like I said, typically Benjamin comes up with some wild shit. He goes, yo, I got some wild, I got some wild AKAs, yo. This shit is stupid. Watch. <laughs> I missed because like, we used to take the train to the studio and that was my yeah. time. I would get roasted and then take that train and be yeah. on the train just like. Yeah. Ah yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh yeah, so that is the creativity of the four old nerds at mm-hmm. play. Um, but yeah, happy to hear and happy to see. Well, I don't really see you, but I'm gonna pretend I see everybody. How you doing? Thank you for watching us. I know you see us. You might see us on twitch.tv slash four all nerds. If you're not seeing us there, you're seeing us on YouTube, youtube.com slash for all nerds tv where you see our beautiful melanated faces and of course you are subscribed to for all nerds on your favorite podcast platform we are on every ting every ting so make sure you're doing that make sure you're sharing because we survive on subscribes we survive on the shares please make sure you're doing that to your fellow fan fam Mm -hmm. and while you're on youtube hit that like and subscribe button what is it smash the like Like button subscribe button y'all (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, this is a very special, as all of our episodes are, but this is a Geekwently Asked Questions episode of the Quark, where we discuss all of the questions that our listeners, that's y'all, send in to us at contact at forallnerds.com. You can also hit us up on the Twitters, on the Instagrams, at forallnerds. And if you are one of the few, the proud, the millions... And millions! You can hit us up on patreon.com slash for all nerds where you help the spaceship keep going. And once you subscribe over there, you know, once you drop some ducats in the bucket, you can hit us up with a question anytime you want. You like that, boss. You know nothing about that stuff. <laughs> Throw your ring into the hat. <laughs> there we Qu- go. Quote Ben I mean. <laughs> Quote Ben I mean. Gore, the God Butcher of Names. <laughs> yes. And now, shout out to my brother, Damon Lindelof, as well. You know, yeah. guest on the show many a time who was there for throwing that ring into the hat. Yes, of course, of course. 
be encouraged you with that foolishness. That's the other thing, y'all. Don't be encouraging Ben Ami with his foolishness. I know everyone is comical. Don't be encouraging because the man goes off the deep end. If man, like I was telling Rodimus on the All Star review of Doctor Strange, you know, somebody lobs it into the air, I'm gonna dunk it. You know what I mean? You <laughs> lob it in the air, I'm gonna dunk it. You know what I mean? Dead vampire storage. You know what I mean? You know what it means. If not. <laughs> Go listen to that episode. That's all I got to say. that, the fact that y'all brought Cicely Tyson into a conversation about the multiverse, like, that's, this is what I'm talking about. This is why For All Nerds is so special. This is why Views from the 616 is so special. Please, as Ben Ami said, make sure you listen, watch, whatever you need to do to take on that episode. Pause. But whatever you need to do to listen or enjoy that episode, please do. That was still like a devil pause. But anyway, um... That is the multiverse of madness. Gotta enjoy that all episode. You got to get start. it all up inside of you. You know what I mean? You got to get man to man with that episode. That's a multiverse of madness all star review starring Rodimus Prime, also starring The Blur Girl, also starring Fantastic Frankie, myself, and DJ Ben Hamin. Mm-hmm. All right, now down to business. We were talking about this is the special Glock episode. Let's get to the first question. This one. Comes from Michael Thompson. Hi, Michael. And the only reason why I'm using your fir- your full name because you let me use your full name. He goes, "Hi, my name is Michael Thompson, aka Remy Martin LeBeau." <laughs> that's pretty good. That's that's <laughs> solid. I like that. Good job. Yeah. Good job, Debria. <laughs> that that, that, that <laughs> actually made Gambit better. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <It did>. yeah. <laughs> All right. Good job. You were right. Mm-hmm. My question is, does his hip hop exist in the future? Mm. I've watched so many movies and TV shows mm. that take place in the future, whether it's 50 years to hundreds of years. And somehow they've always had the characters listening to music that either predate hip hop or just classic rock. Toxic whiteness. I was just about to say. Uh, the only show that I can think of that covered it was Futurama when they referred to hip hop as classical music. But they Toxic only- whiteness. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> But they only use the topic as a joke. What's the issue? I don't know why, but I want to know y'all's opinions. I have one. Black people don't exist in the future. Mm. Go. All right. I've got an even better one. Hip hop will be here forever. Shouts to KRS-One. And I actually have this whole theory that I've been, I don't know, maybe I should do a video essay. That might be the best way to do it. About how hip hop is the Borg of black music. And Mm. it could potentially be the very last form or genre of black music, even though genres of black music are just differentiated because people want to, you know, it's like, it's always been the same black music from Africa. It's just like, we interpret it differently through different technologies. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I could take that. I like that take. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah. but hip hop, because of its form and the way it absorbs every other form of music that comes near it, like the Borg, it'll be here forever. And because of its yeah. simplicity, and because black people, it's one of the first where the majority of black people made money off of it and continue to make money off of it. Unlike rock, distro, soul, you know, there was a few people making money. It wasn't like hip hop. Right. So, yeah, no, forever. Well, unfortunately, ever. the people who are making like real money off of me, because nowadays you don't make money off of just selling music anymore. No. You have to do everything else yeah. besides the actual music. But you can still is- make dough. That's the thing. It's a difference. Like, you can be, you know, an independent artist like Slim Thug in Texas and make racks and never mm-hmm. have your song on the radio. Yeah, no. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but but also, that was also a different time, right? And that was a different delivery system. You could only get it from one, essentially one source or two sources. It was a controlled uh, operation as opposed to now where it's just all, literally, it can come from, any, from anywhere. Um, it's also... I think this is a a separate conversation, but again, Mm -hmm. I just think that was just a different time of how that money making machine worked because it works differently right now, especially when it comes to ownership and who actually gets the money. We watched Toby and Nigwe go from making songs saying I got a hundred thou to saying I got a mill. Mm-hmm. Still ain't got a song right. on the radio. Right. It, now, and right the Toby's now. one. But the thing is, I feel like that, at least in the past, that was that happened more often than not. Like to me now, Toby's like the Toby is the, more of the outliers of people like that who are like fully independent or cl- or close to fully being fully independent before they get signed or any other type of deal. The thing is, you won't even hear about so many of these people that nowadays. That's the difference. This There's people making so much money that we just don't know about. That's what I'm saying. So many people. So yeah, yeah, and they make and 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 so much money is relative, right? But mm-hmm. besides, you can make that, a living. You can make a living, right? 
Yeah. But the, the point I wanted to get into, what I wanted to dig into, like I made the joke about, oh, black people don't have sex in the future. But here's what it mm-hmm. really is. To me, to me, this is mm. just a continuation of the cannibalization of mm. black culture. Mm. And how, especially when we talk about things like, like this is an ongoing conversation. We talk about things like AAVE. We talk, uh, and, and that's African-American mm. vernacular, right? Vernacular mm-hmm. English. We talk about just uh, black, black, digital blackface, stuff like that. Like, the culture has been subsumed and consumed into the internet, into digital culture, to the point where how we speak and talk is 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 relegated to the artificial definition of oh, that's Gen Z speak, right? Mm. So you know, if for people who are on on TikTok or who have read these articles, the way a lot of the and I'm a millennial, right? The way the young, the generation below me, the young the Gen Z speaks, what, regardless of ethnicity and background. They all seem to, as they say online, they all seem to sound alike. And most of it is derivative of AAVE. That mm. is what is popular. That's what has always been popular in mm-hmm. different forms of, of, of society. And I'm talking about American society. Mm-hmm. And with the advent of things like social media and these delivery systems for communication, you have a channel where all of this is being disseminated across the world. You have people who have never seen a black person in real life talking about a child and this and this and mm-hmm. the third. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's that 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 really the commodification and of our culture, which has made it distilled it and made it seem like, oh, this is just this is just how this generation speaks. This is this is all of y'all in one pot. It's like, no, this is black culture that mm-hmm. you're now it's 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 similar to what you said about the whole board thing, where it's like it's just taking everything and putting it into one, mm-hmm. but it's also erasing the source. It's erasing it's this is this is young black kids and young black people and black culture that has really um, marinated this stuff, right? Really cooked up this stuff and continued through how we speak to each other in our communities and all the different forms of the diaspora, and then it's been spread out to everybody else. People have taken it and then said, "Oh, this is Gen Z speak," things like that. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's happened, at least into this question about hip hop is this in the future. Uh, it seems like the music is is missing or not there. No, it's there. It's just that it's been cannibalized into something else that you can never, you probably couldn't even realize what it was. At least in these shows. In because, these shows. Yeah. And the reality is the music will always be there. And it's always the music from which all this culture comes from. And hip hop, you know, predicted all these things back in the nineties, even like Karis one said, now we got white kids drawing themselves nigga. You know, Jay Z after that said, I've seen the same shit happen to Kane, talking about Big Daddy Kane, you know, three cuts in your eyebrows trying to wild out. Like, it's the same thing. You know, people have always done this. Like, even we were talking off air about this movie, Better Luck Tomorrow, that Fast and the Furious fans know about. And that features a bunch of Asian kids in California. And at one point, this one Asian dude turns to, they're all in high school. And this is like early 2000s, I, I would say, when this movie is. And the kids are in high school then. And he turns to his home and he's like, nigga, please. And to me, that was, I didn't think nothing of it because... I grew up in Houston, and it was Asian kids like that back then. You know, were, what I mean, this they, is not new. Like they this were there, but that would that would have been wild, weird to me at that age. I was in when well, you said it was man early when I was in the nineties so high school. High school, yeah, I knew, I knew, I knew. No, oh, nigga, that was like a constant. Right. I mean, nigga but this, I mean, from non-black people. From now, we got white kids strong. This is that's a Karis one ninety six. It's okay. been been around so you said early 2000 that means if you said early 2000 that means i was in high school and like i'm from new york right so it was black and brown kids using that and oh man it wasn't until i was asian kids been running it oh okay. and i'm not saying that they haven't said it clearly they've been saying it in new york too i'm saying in my circles where i heard it. so yeah no this is all that's what i'm saying it it's funny to me like the reaction when you see like especially from the youth online because all of this stuff is so cyclical, you know, and even hip hop used to say that, like Q-Tip said, you know, daddy used to say it reminded me of bebop, you know, and it's just the same thing. Everything goes around and it's like, hmm. I've seen it all, you know, like I've been seeing that. Like, that's not new. What? No, oh, man. Like anyone who listened to hip hop since the beginning of hip hop 
has grown like at least for me grew up man i i could be here all night let's go to the next question <laughs> <laughs> that's a fantastic question michael you ain't never seen nothing till you see the white boy call themselves a devil i'll say that everything you like, say <laughs> to you mama you know what i mean like, yourself a cracker be my guest you know yo you know, I've up to you seeing it when your hair gets wet and it stinks so bad my man was rapping along what? to it <laughs> what <laughs> rapping along to it dog if I'm saying none of this is new. Okay. Well, anyway, like I said, great question, Michael. <laughs> great, AKA. Let's move on. This question comes from Amanda D on Patreon. Hi, Amanda. They right? Do you recommend the Flash comic books? And can mm. you name a few others I can start my 10 year old son to introduce him to the comic book world? Mm. Also, where can I order books online? Is it just Amazon? Mm. All right. Well, you know, shout out to Comic Side Cops. Because, you know, we always talk about all the different comments for copying and uh, Flash. Let's see. Who? Okay. I grew up on some joints from the 90s. On you know, they're still in print. They were pretty dope. Uh, William Messner Loeb's was the author or the artist on that run. So you can look it up like that. I'm not uh, 100% which of the two. And, uh, but the one that everyone loves to for life is the Mark Wade run. And also Joshua Williamson, uh, who did Birthright, a comic I love for Image, is doing Flash right now. And he's a really dope writer. So I would say go for those. Definitely the Mark William, I mean Mark Wade and the Joshua joint. Uh, as far as ordering them, you can get them. You can order from your local comic book shop. I'm not sure where you are, Amanda, but wherever you are, look up your local comic book shop. This is the best way I would say to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, call them up. Say, yo, I'd like to get some Flash comics. They'll mm-hmm. order them for you. They can either hold them to you or probably ship them to you. Mm-hmm. If you're in New York like we are, shout out to anyone comics where you can call them up anytime. In fact, anyone ships nationwide for that matter. If you don't have mm-hmm. a local comic book shop, hit up anyone comics. They're, you know, big fans of ours. We're big fans of theirs. They're located in Brooklyn and they ship nationwide. So you can get stuff from them anytime, any place. That's what's up. Thank you mm-hmm. for the big education. There you go. The next question comes from the Risden. First off, hope y'all have been doing well. One, there's two questions. One, what's a good place to start getting into the current X Men comics? Ooh, mm. Ooh. You, you have already to get know. into it. You already know. Uh, House of X, Powers of X. House. It, I was just gonna say House. Yeah, House just of X, pick Powers up of X, House of X, and just jump into that bitch because that mm-hmm. is one of the greatest X Men like stories of all time at least again i don't have as much of the knowledge as ben but for me of all time oh, i put it up there okay. to me the greatest runs of all time for x-men are chris claremont of course the defining run on x-men from which mm. everything comes from um grant morrison is also still one of my favorites uh josh whedon had a cool little 12 issue joint that a lot of people like i like it as well mm. And there have been some others here and there that are great. And then Jonathan Hitman came in and put his foot all in it with Powers of X, House of X. He came through and crushed the buildings. Came through and crushed the buildings. And to this day, you know, it's been like four years now they've been doing this run. And the comics are still consistently great. Like the Sabretooth joint that just dropped was really good. Uh, what else has been really good lately? Oh, the Sword by Al Ewing, which led into X-Men Red, which is great. And Kieran Gillen's Immortal X-Men is fire. Like, they are just cracking on all cylinders. So I would say start with House of X, Powers of X, and then you can pick up other things like the Swords of X crossover. I mean, y'all know where to go from there. There's a lot. You know, there's a lot of different books. So it's like pick and choose which writers, which artists you love. Read all the Jonathan Hitman stuff. I can say that until he left the books. You know, he did uh, Powers of X, House of X, then he did X-Men. Then he did the Swords of X crossover. Read all that and then pick and choose. Okay. It's fine. And there yes. are actually three questions. So the second one is, are there any indie games y'all are looking forward to this year? Oh, it was looking kind of rough. Indie game. I was like, I was really looking forward to Deathloop. Uh, and then. It was all right. It was just all right. Right? Yeah. Like, but, but I'm saying, I was hyping that shit for two I know. years straight. I was hyping that like there's past episodes where i was gassing it heavy and then i was yeah. like oh okay it was cool i didn't even finish it yet but I that's just... what i'm saying like uh, yo another one that's hurting up. me right now is uh horizon man like 
Horizon Zero Dawn. The next. I just the, have not gone one. back to it, dog. Like, right. I mean, and, these aren't indie games, by the way. Like, yeah, no, I'm just saying big, about games yeah. that, like, ugh. Yeah, yeah I don't get have it. You, have you gotten into Elden Ring at all? No, I've been thinking about it a lot, but it's just the graphics don't do it for me. Like, I know they're beautiful, but it's so dark. You know what I mean? And that, like, doesn't really. Some dark I can't, soul shit. You know? Yeah, and that, like, if it was, like, bright, I wouldn't care how hard it is. Because, like, Ninja Gaiden, the Ninja Gaiden Black Joint, <laughs> oh, God. I beat the living life out of that game, and it's difficult. Really? Yeah, but I loved it. You know what yeah. I mean? There's that other one, uh, Sifu. Shout okay. out to Mellow Marketer. I want to get into that. It's, uh, it's, I think it's it's something like that where it's a, you play as a martial artist, and you get older every time you die. Oh. Yeah, and then so you gain more skills, and it's uh like road light where you have to, you know, it's one run through the whole thing. But if they say once you learn how to fight in it, you you know, it looks like a martial arts movie because it's just like you whooping like everybody's nonstop. ass. Yeah, it's like a it's like a continuous shot in the hallway. It's like mm-hmm. it's like <laughs> Daredevil yeah, you can do all. The, I think they have a hallway fight. They do all that, you know. Oh wait, excuse so, me. It's like old old boy, uh, old, old boy, or like even. all the great martial it arts man. movies. Yeah, anything. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I got to get into that because this it, that joint's only like twenty bucks. I might pick that up tonight, man. On the low. I'm okay, look at you inspiring us. Yep. All right. The third question, the last question is: What professions with the teenage mutant ninja turtles take up if they suddenly had a function in society? So what is that? Donatello, <laughs> Michelangelo, Leonardo, and Raphael. It's uh, tight, fam. Michelangelo was still science the... experiments. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be in that glass cube with Christine Palmer. Okay. Facts, baby. I'm um, still not being able to get out of, of your they're... own of your own glass cube that you've been working with for years at a time, but now all of a sudden you don't know how to open it just because you know somebody comes. Just through. because okay. the movie um, can continue. Okay, uh, but <laughs> Michelangelo would probably still work for Domino's Pizza or something like that as a delivery driver. Um, no, but actually, no, 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 he'd, no. he'd be a straight up. Um, it, celebrity endorser. Celebrity endorser? Really? Hell that would yeah, be a what? He's a Ninja Turtle dog. Come on, dog. If he's not a science experiment, he is famous. You don't like, think you don't think they would have flopped by now? Is or got canceled by now or pseudo canceled? It's 2022. You know the TMNT would have did some shit that people would be like, oh no, nah, fuck. I mean, niggas. anything they do, dog. Like you, you know, like you, you talk to a woman, it's over, <laughs> fam. <laughs> like, <laughs> The bestiality, you know, complaints that are coming out. Like, <laughs> Come on, Ben. What is your problem? Damn. You ever seen that video? You, you might not have. When the turtles were on Oprah after no. the first movie. All right. What? Yeah, this is going to get dark. I want to say it's is Oprah. Is this some Michael Bay bullshit? No, it's either, it's either Oprah or Donahue. This is after like the first joint. I'm talking about the oh, old school. Oh, you're talking about school. the 90s? Yes, the old oh. school joint, right? So it's like the dudes in their live, in their suits, you know, on stage talking with Oprah. And they got a, the woman who plays April O'Neil. And it gets gross. That's all I'll say. What is what is men like? I just don't understand. No, but it's like Oprah was encouraging. Why are you making it gross? No, it's like Oprah was encouraging. You're blaming Oprah now. Oprah, look, Oprah back in the day was as wild as it gets, folks. Don't (laughs) act. Don't 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 be brand new on me. I don't know know that. I'm just. What do you mean? Them billions was built on a talk show, and it was a wild talk show back in the day. It was not the, you know, duh, 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 women are positive and everything. It was, you know, it was a talk show. But the people was walking into them traps willingly then. Y'all stupid. But she's sitting there like asking all kind of wild questions. And, and you're going like, to answer? Well, I guess it's the 90s, so. <laughs> what else you going to do? You sitting there in a turtle suit. Think about your life, brother. You were <laughs> you in, are, number one. Why you, you in a turtle suit? You thinking about your life, fam. You in a turtle suit. <laughs> Nah, son. I uh, I don't know. I I I think I think TMNT might have flopped by now. Oh, they um, damn they, sure would. Like I said, yeah. they probably would have. Did they reboot come back in 2010? Then flopped again in 2013. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, that's why I'm like, I think he might have been back to the driver situation. Science experiment. Science experiment, fam. You know they would have been what? In what way though? When you say science experiment, you talk about they getting cloned. You talk about they they genes. And I'm talking about it's not a good therapy. ending for the TMNT. Damn. <laughs> like, yeah. They better stick to the sewers, baby. Damn. Okay. Well, then we're telling we're saying that we have no jobs. They have no <laughs> professions. No. 
No. Yikes. All right. Next question. <laughs> Sorry, Riz. Uh, next question comes from Missy510. They write, because I'm not familiar enough with Namor, how do you feel he'll fit into the Black Panther movie if the reports are true? Ah, well, look who we have here. <laughs> Namor the Submariner himself. Um, I'm Why is thighs so thick? Why is thighs so thick? Could this man be swimming through the oceans? What else Legs he and like? hips yeah. and oh, yeah. body yaddy. Oh, yeah. He give you all that body yaddy, baby. All of that. <laughs> this is Namor. Yeah, man. Yeah, come on. You know how he... I don't know. This man is a Lothario, as they say. I saw one amazing Namor cosplay, what, 2019 or 2018? Mm -hmm. New York Comic Con. I remember, dude. Yep. Yep. We have it in our greatest day of cosplay video. Please watch that. It's on our YouTube if you haven't before. Um, just incredible cosplay. But go ahead, Ben. Yeah. So how? Do, okay, I've heard some rumors. There actually some rumors came out the other day about Namor, and what they're saying is that they're gonna tie Atlantis into being like a Central American, Mexican continent or something that sank. So instead of it being like I saw Atlantic some Pangea or, shit that got separated and saying or like uh like the aztec city of gold type thing that got you know sunk so because they have a latinx actor Mex i think he's mexican who's playing namor mm. yeah and so they're you know changing up the origin a little bit which i like because you know black panther already has all the stuff with gods and everything so mm -hmm. they're gonna have that you makes know, sense yeah. them have their own gods and you know get into the old you know native and indigenous you know religions and everything mm -hmm. so i think that's dope now the interesting part about it is one of namor's big things in the comics recently that a lot of people look want to see is him sinking wakanda like he floods wakanda after i i don't even know i can't remember what caused him to do it they had some beef you know black panther and namor had some beef and eventually uh, Namor comes through and floods the building. Mm. It's all literally bad. yes. And then Shuri and T'Challa get together, and Shuri, in this famous scene, gives him a knife and says, "Put this where it belongs." And T'Challa takes it. Black Bolt, because he's mad at Namor over some other shit, gives Namor the business with the scream, and then T'Challa puts the knife where it belongs. And that's the end of Namor for a second, you know. But wow. like everybody, you know, he comes back. So. You know, we don't have a T'Challa in this film. You know, allegedly we don't know what's going on. Who knows? Right. So how they're going to fit it in. And I don't really want to see Namor sinking Wakanda. You know what I mean? That doesn't mm. seem like a good look. You know, like we've had after. enough L's in Wakanda. I don't need to see that, you know, yeah. so. Ugh. Right after they open it up to, not all the way, but you know, Man. it's not Disneyland, yeah. that bitch. Yeah. But, you know, after they are open to the world and y'all gonna sink that bitch already. And the child ain't even there to defend his actions. Like, right. ooh, that's terrible. I mean, they was so. already fighting against, um, not Kang, but they was already fighting against uh, Thanos and, and them people. You mm -hmm. know, they was at, right at the front line. So, and yeah. we're gonna have to hear about that. That's definitely gonna have to come up in this film. I know that mm. Ryan's not gonna, you know, not let that slide. So, yeah. I'm hyped. That's all I can say. I don't know exactly how they're gonna fit it in, but you know, we saw the images of from Thor: Love and Thunder where they have Bast, you know, the god mm -hmm. herself in the film. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and that woman is beautiful. Jeez. Ooh, mm -hmm. Lord. So you know, that was that was some casting, and so I'm hyped, man. That's you know, especially if they do go this route with these indigenous gods and everything with Namor. I'd love to see it. Okay, that's all I can say. Gotcha. Yep. And let's see, we also have a big compound question. This is the last question from Chica. We, she has several. Chica is our social media manager. If you've ever interacted with any of our social media accounts on IG and the Twitters, you have interacted with Chica um, or some multiverse variation thereof of her because she is amazing and has so many talents. So mm -hmm. let's get into some of these questions. She says, hello, I'm Chica, a.k.a. Chica Supreme, a.k.a. Mm. Bucky No Bundles, a.k.a. Mm. Tits on ant, <laughs> tits on an ant. Okay. Tits on an ant. AKA Shea Butter Kang worshiper. Mm. Yeah. We were just talking about this man. Definitely loves Shea Butter Kang. Uh, she says, "I have questions." Question letter A: Isn't Doctor Strange 2 a demonstration of how racism is the impetus for evil? 
Mm. Like Monica got shot for Wanda's imaginary kids, mm. but Wanda gave her a hard time all of WandaVision. Then it escalated from her screwing up a town to messing with the multiverse in Doctor Strange. Mm. Wow. That's a great, that's actually a great uh, mm. observation. I, I mean, can't say you're wrong. <laughs> I can't say you're wrong, especially, you know, how they disrespected America Chavez. It just feels like racism all around that movie. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we, say, yeah. we, we already talked about how Monica got played. You know what I mean? America Chavez got wrong. You know, it, Wong was mm-hmm. right. Wong was right. As our t-shirts say, tpublic.com slash stores slash for all nerds. Speaking of, just a quick, quick, quick note disclaimer. DCMA takedown. I am calling my lawyers because whoever is doing this is going to prison and jail. The only place you can ever get for all nerds merch as of May 2022 is our Public page. If you mm-hmm. ever see our shit anywhere else and we did not tell you directly in your face or otherwise that it's we put that there, that means it's not from us. That means someone stole from us and they are stealing from out of our mouths of ourselves and of our staff. So please... If you see that, thank you to the person who reported the. the, the I, I have no idea what this this site is, but they literally lifted our whole shit and put it on their site and said that they made it. And it's it's wild because it's like <laughs> it's, 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 they're, it's they didn't even try, right? It was just like you know, change your homework a little bit, but nothing. So anyway, uh, mm-hmm. tpublic dot com slash stores slash for all nerds. That's how you get the Wong was right shirt. Thank you. Yes. All right, Chica's next question. In response to Walmart's Juneteenth ice cream, does red velvet taste like freedom? <laughs> well, first of all, that here's the thing, what I found out, and I found this out through Rodimus Prime, allegedly, this whole thing about the red velvet and that whole Juneteenth ice cream was actually potentially from a black employee. Yeah, of course it was. And so and 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 Rodimus brought up a good point. He said, What's funny is you would think like they actually finally gave this this chance to the black employee. The black employee comes up with the idea. They run with it. They put it on. They put it out. And Twitter's like, nah. That's what Rodimus said. And I'm like, yeah, damn. He said he said it's such a interesting like uh like observation catch twenty two if you will. Like it's just like we we scream for representation of the stuff. Then it happens and we're like, nah. Now here's the thing. It then you start coming into terms of taste, right? Like, yeah. Is it a taste situation? Like. Or can is a situation where you can tell it's an imposter, right? It's not really a black person doing it. For example, I saw some some dollar store, I guess some some type of store. They was had Juneteenth plates, and one and one of the plates said, "It's the freedom for me." Was that a black person who came up there? Because there are corny, be. there are corny black people, and that's yes, what I'm saying. It could be. It could be. Yes, yes. So that's terrible. But you know, um, okay. and, uh, <laughs> that's terrible. Barky voice. I don't know. Also, uh, I don't like red velvet in general. So the idea oh, of red, red velvet, velvet and ice cream was like, I wasn't really right. down for it either way. I wasn't offended. I don't care. I, I wasn't offended. It, it, I didn't it, even mention it. The flavor sounded delicious, to be quite honest with you. And what it was it? Say, red velvet and what? Well, it's not even real. Like, that's the thing. They should have put red velvet pieces. It's like, I think it's red yeah. velvet flavor. And, it's just like but, red and chalk, uh, cream cheese. cheese. Cr- Usually, some type of, I mean, if you don't like red velvet, you're not going to like it. But that's typically yeah. the icing that goes with it. So it was delicious sounding to me. And like I said, there wasn't no. But it what's black of, about that? Is that is that how bad it is? No, it's literally said. Black? It, no, no, no. It said Juneteenth. On I know, the, but on I'm the talking about the flavor. Packaging. Is red velvet like the black flavor? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> no yellow cake. What is it? Yellow cake with chocolate is the black cake. Like, I don't I don't like that either. But I don't I, don't I like know German that. chocolate personally. Uh, Whatever. Point is, I I didn't see a fan. I think people need to move on for that. Like, like I said, it didn't say it's the freedom for me on it. That's real wild. And also, it's just funny to me how what what Rodimus said. Like, sometimes it really is coming from a black person mm-hmm. from within, but it's also just like, damn, I guess they're corny like that because that shit didn't go. Yeah. And it was uh, also them things just looked ugly. And I mean, to me, the whole commercialization as someone who grew up with Juneteenth, you know, from Texas, it's it's always been weird to me. Like, just the idea of celebrating Juneteenth has been weird to me because mm. when I grew up, it was a lot We's more free, about... now. Nah. Yeah, it was a lot more about, you know, they played us. You know, that's the thing. <laughs> and we, we would go out... We just found out. 
And yeah, we would go out and chill, you know, have a little party, barbecue and stuff. But it wasn't like this whole thing, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, I think it's, I think it's yeah. both ways, right? Because like, there's also an older generation who, and I'm talking about even beyond you, Ben, like there's a mm-hmm. whole older generation, like your parents and their parents who this is a monumental thing. Like I said, I, I know like a few years back, someone was like really upset about how people in the younger generation were taking it like you know yeah. the whole the whole push they were just and you know how we was complaining against and they was because of the whole commercialization but they were like mm-hmm. you don't understand how important this has been for luminaries and visionaries and politics that are black and all that stuff and i get it like i get that part of it but also we live in america right mm-hmm. everything is commercialized and 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 simmered down into the lowest common denominator and we get shit like it's the freedom for me fries like Nah, son. Like I'm, I'm good with that. So I, I get both sides of it. It is what it is. Um, but there is just on that whole velvet. There is an actual red velvet ice cream pieces, I believe, flavored type ice cream from a black company called like, Cream Malicious. So mm. if you want to support that flavor with a black people, there you go. All right. All right. Uh, next question. Now that Eon Flux, aka Charlize Theron, is in the MCU, do y'all think she'll have chemistry with Doctor Strange? She gives fish to me. I agree no, he with you. Gives fish Excuse me. to me. He gives fish to me. Excuse me. Like I can't imagine him loving on nobody. I agree. Yes, Chica. I agree. He gives fish. I agree. I can't imagine Doctor Strange. Like they lean. He leans so hard into the asshole. Like I still mm-hmm. to this day do not like Doctor Strange. As a record label, uh, as a motherfucking crew, like I don't, um, it, you know, ha ha he he would he could kiki with him with the joke sometimes, but like I don't like his character as a like as a person. Like if he stood right there, I just would not fuck with him. So I don't care about his love life, but I just don't see like how am I supposed to care? I know uh, Ben. I mean, you told me after we finished watching Multiverse, you told me about the whole situation with him and Clea and. That's really his girl, girl, and those other stuff. But I'm just like, I nah. wasn't getting nothing out of it. I wasn't getting nothing. I always loved Clea as a character, but I never cared about her being with him. I just thought she was dope. You know, she was, had the white hair and the purple outfits, so and she was always fire to me. I never cared about her being like anything with him. I like when you know comments are just about Clea. Yeah. So yeah, so. and I love Charlize, so I'm down for to see her do more Clea. But I, know, I, I, and also just from a actor standpoint i don't feel chemistry between them and i'm even thinking like like again they're both good actors but i I just don't feel how y'all gonna make me care Mm -mm. like i did not care about wanda and vision i it made me it made me throw up at first when like they to me they was forcing this relationship and forcing this chemistry but then i grew into it like Mm because to me it developed I just don't see it, period. Like, I had an inkling of maybe, like, for example, Vision Wanda. I was like, okay, maybe. This one, I don't see it. Yeah. Uh, just in terms of feeling like seeing that chemistry, seeing it work. I mean, listen, you're a good enough actor. You can make anything work, but I just, I don't believe it. I think they'll make it happen. I just don't know how. Okay. Question, the next question. Do y'all think Kang and Wanda will team up? What is your multiverse preference? The Loki multiverse with variants or Strange's multiverse? Loki. I I like Loki. Multi multiverse all day, every day. Yeah. And really everything everywhere all at once multiverse is kind of the, the supreme multiverse at this point. So really is. Um uh, yeah. Do you think Kang and Wanda will team up? Hopefully not. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I think they've been playing Wanda so terribly. I think they need to take a break. You know. Well, Wanda's out until Easter, okay? Until she comes out with Jesus. So we don't need to worry about her right now. So I don't yeah. know. No, nah, I think I think Kane need to shine by himself and, you know, get with his Ravona. He, he's so good. Like, he's... Jonathan played the hell out of that character. He, for those few moments, I was mm. just like, oh, my God. I just need to see Kang all day. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I don't want to see a team up. I, I would rather see him stand on his own. Agreed. Yep. Who is next question? Who are some podcasts that you guys want to collaborate with in the future? Ooh, very good. Um, I don't think we've ever been on the Blur Girls podcast, have we? No, we haven't. Maybe in the, on an individual level, I think I have. It was when it was called something else. So, but I think that would be cool. Um, 
what else? What else? What else? Who else? I, I mean, we've been on a lot of people's podcasts, especially now. Mm-hmm. We did that call to action. Everybody like, yo, you want us on your show? And we're still going mean, to say that yeah, now. Do it again. If you want us to be a guest on your podcast, please hit us up. And this is, and I'm being, and I'm actively asking this. Yes. Hit us up. Contact at foralnerds.com. And just let us, let us know about your podcast, what you talk about. And, you know, we'll try to schedule something and make it happen. So if you're interested in having us on, just let us know. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we just may not know that we want to collaborate with you. It, it'd probably be a really good collab. So, yeah. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then finally, will there be a fan staff podcast episode? Yes, Chica. I would love for there to be. I would say this. I would love for there to be a fan staff episode because I know Luna, our engineer, he would just be every other word would probably be a sound effect. And <laughs> I'm just looking forward to the I just think it would be an episode of Tales of the Nova Realm. Tales of the Nova Realm, if y'all don't know, is is Luna's um podcast about um it's kind of like D with, D with, with with fiction and and Game of Thrones type situation. And and Ben and I are actually um we we cameoed in it for one episode and we mm-hmm. have like a whole like animation and everything. So but um yeah, I just think that would just be fire for yep. sure. Definitely. Yeah. And I think that's it for the Gua question. So thank you, everyone, for your questions. We appreciate your time and your energy. If you have a Gua question for us, it could be about geek and pop culture. It could be about raising your children on this geek and pop culture. It could be about naming your children after this geek and pop culture or anything else you want to know from our perspective, from our opinion. Hit us up, contact at foralnerds.com in the emails. You want some space or privacy. You can also hit us up when we post the little guac calls for action on the internet, on the interwebs. You can just add us. And if you're on Patreon, patreon.com slash foralnerds, you can send us a message at any point. And we will look at that and potentially add it to the list. All right. All right. All right. And I think that's it for this special episode of For All Nerds, where we covered our geekly asked questions. We answered everything that y'all sent us. Thank you for all these great questions. Thank you for, as always, following us on all the various social media platforms, the Twitters, the Instagrams, at For All Nerds. Make sure you're following us on YouTube, youtube.com slash TV. No. YouTube.com slash For All Nerds TV. There we go. Also, make sure you hit us up on patreon.com slash for all nerds. You can also find us on twitch.tv slash for all nerds. And I know we've been kind of taking a break over there, but we'll be right back because uh, Miss Marvel is dropping like soon ish. <laughs> um, they also hitting us over the head with this Obi Wan joint that's dropping soon ish. I can't Stranger that. Things I is can't. coming out that's dropping soon ish. Um, yeah, expect a lot of content from us as always, and we'll be right back with Mo. Disney owe me a check. <laughs>